come in. So, um, yeah, feel free to yeah. start if you want, Mark and Dan. Excellent. Do you want to kick it off, Dan? Yeah, so thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, what we're going to do today is we've got a small presentation. Um, we're going to go through a bit of information about youth music, the incubator fund, why it was set up, um, some of the criteria of the fund and how you can apply. We're really excited to have Spike here from Forte Project. Um, I'm sure many of you know Spike. Um, so Spike was successful in round one and it's going to talk through a bit about Forte Project, you know, what they're doing with the incubator fund, um, how his experience has been so far. So just a bit of housekeeping first. Um, we're going to do the presentation. So then um, what, if you've got any questions as we're going through, feel free to put those in the chat. Um, some of them might get covered as we're going through, but we're going to try and make sure to leave about half an hour at the end um, for Q&A. The other thing is we've got a closed captioner um, stream running as well. So if anybody needs subtitles, um, the link to that Phoebe's going to put in the chat. So um, if you click on that link, then you'll be able to access the subtitles at the bottom. Um, yeah, obviously, feel free to have cameras off, you know, while you're listening. And um, uh, please, you know, put yourselves on mute. It looks like everybody has. Um, I think I think that's it. Mark, are you are you ready to kick yeah, this off? Yeah, if you pull up, are you, are you going to pull the presentation up? Yeah. Um, the link to captioning should be there. Um, yeah. Cool. There we go. Someone's just asking me for the, the link. Okay. Yeah. You can just jump forward, Dan. So it's just really, yeah, you, you know, appreciate you all turning up and a couple of faces I've spoke to, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks. And, and, you know, we launched the incubator fund. So this is round two we're looking at. And we just want to set the scene really and tell you a little bit more about the incubator fund. Before doing that, I'll just, you know, for some of you're unfamiliar, talk you a little bit through uh, youth music, not spending too much time on this. But, you know, we're the National Foundation for Youth Music and we're we're 20 years old now, 21 years old, in fact, this year, I think it's 22, maybe even. Uh, and, you know, we distribute funds to support music making projects for children and young people, you know, in challenging circumstances uh, across England. So, uh, you know, our current grants program is funded by the Arts Council England. Uh, so we're able to support around 350 projects reaching about 80,000 people, uh, 80,000 children and young people every year, not to 25. So it's, it's, it's you know, quite a sizable uh, organisation, but, you know, we can only fund 40% of the applications that, that, that come in uh, into us. So, you know, the young people we're sort of working with in, in rural isolation, low socioeconomic backgrounds, physical disability, neurodiversity and uh, all, all these kind of areas, you know, is, is what we fund. Uh, so just pushing on to seeing how we do that, uh, should be the next slide. You know, we've got the current grants A, A and B, which are smaller grants, which are England only at the moment. You know, that funding comes through Arts Council England, so that is restricted to, to uh, England only. Uh, you know, and then what we're talking about, this is our new incubator fund, which is grants of 5,000 to 30,000 uh, pounds, where we're opening up careers, as you can, you know, see for yourself, to underrepresented groups. So this is the real sort of thrust of this, this uh, presentation today. And, you know, later on this year, springtime, we'll be looking to, uh, looking towards direct funding young people in springtime so this will be a follow-on maybe 18 to 25 year olds uh, and direct funding and that's something that youth music have done for the first time uh, which is really exciting and uh, we're really looking forward to that and, and, and like I said hopefully it could be a follow-on from the incubator fund through to the 18 to 25 direct funding and then we do have you know access funds available for small grants uh, as well so if, the, if you do have any accessible issues then get in touch and we, you know, we, we're really happy to cover that. Uh, yeah, so I'll pass over to Dan to talk about the Incubator Fund and where this all came from, the Blueprint for the Future sort of report that we released in July uh, last year. 
Thank you. Um, so yeah, so this this fund actually came out of some research that we did um, over the last year, really, which was published um, in summer last year called A Blueprint for the Future. So you can download this from Youth Music's website, or if you Google A Blueprint for the Future, um, you'll be able to get hold of the report. It's really good read. Um, what it was, was we spoke to uh, over 1,300 young people aged 18 to 25 and over 100 people in the music industries. And we had kind of one central question, which was around how do you build a sustainable career in music? Um, what does that look like for people starting out at the moment? How are they doing it? What obstacles might they be facing? You know, what's the industry currently doing about this? And, and what really could youth music do to better support young people with ne their next steps? Um, we actually carried out the research right at the beginning of the year. Um, so we were just going into lockdown at that point and the impact of COVID wasn't super clear at that point. Um, so, you know, it, it is obviously the picture has changed now, um, but it did give us a chance to really understand what the important issues were that young people were facing and kind of really understand the experiences. Um, and obviously, you know, I think some of the barriers which they talk about are, are just compounded even further now. Um, with where we are so um one of the things that that was really exciting about this research was the number of really inspirational and amazing young people that we met so i've just highlighted some of them on the slide um these were you know young people who were kind of doing things with a sort of diy mentality and working on their own terms um you know tackling any barriers that they were facing and um kind of creating their own paths outside of the system working with each other, working collectively, and just, um, you know, with sheer determination and passion, um, really doing exciting stuff. So we wanted to kind of highlight that alongside some of the issues which we thought really needed changing as well. I won't go into the whole report, you know, you guys can download and read this, but some of the stuff which we which we found and which we touched on you know, won't, won't be news to, to you if you're working in this area, but um, some of the key findings were the relationship between the education and industry um, sides of the music sector uh, could be better. Um, we found that often they're working too separately from each other. Um, people were, the young people we spoke to said that, you know, the routes in seemed quite opaque and it was difficult to find what the options to get into the industry were, unless you were potentially going down a performance route. Um, so, you know, we, we were thinking about how could this, um, ecosystem you know work more collectively together how can educators and people in the industry sort of better work in touch with each other um, and there is some really great stuff happening on the ground and some really innovative stuff that we highlight within the report um, but yeah obviously what we wanted to do is kind of fund more of that work so anything we fund through the incubator fund you know we're really targeting it at the music industry and how we can create this um, this partnership between education and industry we also looked a bit at the barriers to entry. Um, you know, there's discrimination, there's unpaid internships, there's people getting in and then dropping out again because the, the work isn't sustainable. Um, you know, it's a hugely tough industry to get into. There's a huge amount of competition. Um, there's huge issues around diversity, um, access to networks. If you don't have those, it can hinder, you know, how do you know how to get in? Do you know the right people all of these sorts of things and we kind of summed it up that people were, were, were tending to reach a bit of a bottleneck and um the ones who were able to get through that bottleneck seemed to be the ones that were had, you know had support around them and had some level of advantages um so you know we, we, we're really looking to once change that the other thing that came up quite often was this idea of like a portfolio career and um that became increasingly commonplace people working on a freelance basis you know the gig economy um you know quite literally in music so again how are people equipped to to navigate that world um so you know we look quite quite closely at that one of the sort of more depressing findings was that we found these barriers to the industry were, were really heightened depending on who you were and where you were coming from so we actually found that women, young women, were, were far less likely to get into the industry uh, than their male counterparts. We also found that location had a really big effect on, on people's chances of getting into music and earning money from music. And we also found that social class was the biggest barrier. Um, you know, probably no surprise. 
but those from a lower socioeconomic backgrounds didn't have as much, um, they, they weren't as likely to be earning money from music and didn't have as much access to networks and things like that. So, um, as I said, one of the really positive things that we found through the report was there were so many young people who were doing really exciting things kind of in spite of these barriers and working together to, to actually kind of create the change that they wanted to see. Um, so we, we were saying, you know, how these young people are doing amazing stuff by themselves, but actually, how could we be supporting them? How could we be amplifying that and giving them the, a better chance of success? And this is kind of where the incubator fund comes comes from was um, us looking at how we could actually kind of you know give them more of the tools that they need so this ethos of it yourself diy we were saying well how can this be more of a do it together approach there could be more of a kind of collaborative approach between edu education and industry um, and let's create a conversation about these issues and, and put some money on the table um, to actually try and overcome some of the things that young people are facing and then another one of the kind of key findings we had was that there are a lot of programs out there, particularly existing kind of publicly funded programs for the artists and for performers, which is amazing. And, and there's, some, there's some really good stuff happening, but we didn't find as much um, support for those who wanted to work within music, but not as a performer, maybe as a music professional. Um, so that was something that kind of kept coming up repeatedly. Um, what people are saying, you know, how do I do this or how could I access funding? Because it seems to only be for the artists. So that was something we, we were quite keen to tackle as well. So, yeah, we launched the, the, the fund at the same time. And this was, you know, co-designed with industry professionals. We spoke to, as I said, over 100 um, industry professionals and working with groups of young people um, who we spoke to through, through this work. And um, so the, the focus on the fund is about tackling those issues which I've highlighted and um, creating those opportunities for collaboration and mutual benefit from an employer, the young people, the industry, the education world and um, you know bringing some fresh thinking, some creative ideas and some entrepreneurial new talent into your network, into your workplace, into your business. Um, so the way that it works is you would be, if you apply, you would be giving 18 to 25 year olds the opportunity to deliver their own creative projects and receive support from your organization through incubation, training, mentoring, and networking. And so we've, we've highlighted in the guidance um, who we'd like you to focus this on. And we're talking about reaching young people who are currently underrepresented in the music industries. So, you know, look at look at the blueprint and look at the guidance and you'll get a sense of, of, of who, who we'd like you to focus on working with. And then in terms of the organisations we want to fund, um, we want to back innovative, dynamic businesses, not for profits within the industries, uh, people who can offer genuine work opportunities. And um, what your need to do to apply is you'll need to develop a strand where 18 to 25 year olds can take on and plan and execute a real project and so we hope that this will build up their project management skills give them a track record and a portfolio for employment that they can take forward and we really wanted to prioritize people who can give those young people the autonomy to make decisions and lead so it's, it's a slightly different emphasis from like maybe a typical internship program where somebody might be coming in and doing a more entry level job. This is about actually what could you get from employing a group of 18 to 25s and involving them in your work, but giving them the autonomy to lead on something. And so, you know, as I said, we want to put our money where our mouth is. So at least 50% of the grant has to go directly to the 18 to 25s. And that can be paid out as a wage, can be paid as a freelance commission, or it can be a bursary or a micro grant. Um, so, you know, you, you choose what's going to work best for them and for you. And then the remainder, whatever's left out, out, out of the grant, you know, can be go towards the organisation costs and staff time and other um, overheads and associated support costs. So we what we want to see is, you know, wages paid at the living wage. Um, it's not about a, a kind of wage replacement scheme. We would like employers to contribute as well. And I'll come on to talk about the government and how they can also contribute because they have something now called the kickstart scheme um, and then um, we also 
I'm keen to see organisations building a, a kind of support offer as part of the programme. So it's not just about getting young people through the door, but actually how do you how do you give them the skills they need to retain a, 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 and succeed in the industry? So we're looking for people to, um, you know, give access to mentoring, um, networks, support in developing, you know, portfolio career um, and their own, you know, personal brand for want of a better word. Um, so all of those sorts of things, you know, you, you can think about how you might be able to put together a package of support that would help somebody enter the industry. And we're not talking about working with big numbers of, of young people. Um, we, we've said within the guidance that we, we think it would suit working between two and 10 young people, depending on the, on the setup of your program. But we really want to focus on, on, on an intensive program of support rather than you know, a volume of, of trying to reach loads and loads of people. Um, so, yeah, I think what we're going to do now is um, I just want to highlight some of the some of the organisations that, that were funded in the first round. And we had a, we had a really nice mix of organisations, um, as you can see there, from record labels like Black Acre to um, quite a few radio stations, Platform B, No Signal, um, Reform Radio, um, talent development organisations like Generator in Newcastle, um, networks like Girls I Rate, um, particularly focus on female artists, um, Saffron again also focus on, on female artists, particularly in electronic music, um, Ezra Collective, uh, an award winning jazz collective um, who are creating a programme around sound engineering for, for young women. So yeah, real, a really interesting spread of organisations. And um, what we were really excited to see is that a lot of these have a feet in, in both the education world and, and the industry world, uh, which is where we're really trying to, trying to create that progression rate for young people into the industry. So we're gonna talk a little bit now to uh, Spike and, and just hear from Forte Project, who are one of the successful applicants in Wales, and hear a little bit more about you know, what what they did, um, how they got involved, and um, the project's just starting off, so we'll hear a little bit more about the plans and what they're looking to achieve. Um, so I can't actually see Spike on my screen, but... Spike... How are you, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you, so do you want to talk a little bit about why you applied and, you know, what, you, what you're hoping to... Yeah, do? absolutely. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I think for us throughout the, it has a little bit of a background for us and throughout the latter part of 2019 and early 2020, we were tasked by Arts Council of Wales to look at how we could roll out some of our youth music development work, which we've been doing for about 10 years with, mainly with young people from disenfranchised areas of South Wales and many whom have never really experienced a way of access in the music industry in Wales. So very much like Dan described the barriers that they were uh, come to light in the blueprint for the future report. We were we were really working on on those um, on trying to get around those those barriers and obstacles. So um, the work that we were tasked with at that point was moving out of our provincial support in South Wales to deliver something which could be more wide reaching nationwide pan Wales. And we recognised one of the early steps would be to create a, a suite of online bi bilingual music resources with a purpose to provide direct access to knowledge, mentorship, networks and opportunity and, you know, hoping to support those who are looking to carve a career in the music and creative industries and also offering them Korean personal development skills and music, music industry awareness. So... Pre-COVID, we, we've always been really passionate about supporting young people, uh, getting them to access career pathways, education, and learning. And um, COVID hit us for six, uh, but we were really passionate to to make something incredibly positive out of the dark area. So we, when the incubator fund was announced, you know, the first round was announced, it was an opportunity for us to visualize what those ideas could look like. The work that we've been doing in R and D capacity and what it could be looked like, and also bringing on young people on board to execute a real project. So it was it really chimed with us what the uh, incubator fund was all about, particularly having young people at the heart of the idea and allowing them to develop skills for a sustainable career. 
And yeah, that was, I guess that was back in July, wasn't it? The first round down. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then we were successful. We, we heard back in, I think, September time. Yeah. So we could get the ball rolling and develop this these new resources, not not essentially by us, but having young people at the heart. So we've got four jobs out now, uh, attracting four placements. And also we've got uh, the opportunity to bring on some freelancers, young freelancers, 18 to 25. When those young people are in post, they'll have mentors, they will have um, personal development support, they'll have mental health support, um, and they will have uh, other creative freelancers working with them to really hone their expertise and develop, as you said, that portfolio um, for uh, an emerging career. Yeah, it's, it's such a great idea. And um, I think it's, it's something that, you know, as a Forte project, you know, you were looking to kind of do and had plans had plans to, to go ahead with it. And hopefully the incubator funds enabled you to kind of take them to the next level, but also crucially get young people involved with them and really give them the chance to, to work on it and, and make it theirs. Yeah. I mean, the distinction between Forte and Beacons is the Forte we're working with artists and we only we can only work with so many artists because of the, the budget we have. We've been able to go wheels wide with that in a digital context, but Beacons is really honing on that um, music industry personnel, the future personnel of the Welsh music industry. So there's a definite distinction between the two projects. Um, I'm not a musician and, and I kept my teeth by putting on gigs when I was 14 and I really want to support those young people who who come from those backgrounds who really just have a you know the, a determination really and we really want to support the underrepresented uh, young people who who haven't had their way of access in the music industry before so that's how we're going to do it but we have only just started it's, it's the first yeah, yeah. month for yeah. us cool thank you spike um so one, one thing i just want to highlight is we have created a blog um which is on our website about uh, our reflections on the first round of, of funding. I'm just going to hand over to Mark, who's going to talk a little bit through that. Um, you know, just just some of the highlighting some of the things that people did well, and highlighting some of the areas where people might have struggled a little bit more, um, or some of the areas where um, people weren't prioritised in our. Cause it was quite a competitive fund, and where where, where applications weren't prioritised. And and Mark, do you want to talk about how they're assessed as well? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cheers, Dan. Uh, and great, cheers, Spike, for bringing it to life there. Uh, so that's great. You know, and, you know, we do have sort of, as Dan said, the blog on the website, but, you know, it's all about creating a strong application. And, you know, I guess, you know, what we've talked about and reiterating really is that the opportunity, you know, that giving 18 to 25 is that autonomy to lead. You know, it's really about meaningful experiences. You know, they've got, you know, the opportunity to make decisions and really got a seat at the table. Uh, it's it's simply not a, a simple job or an internship kind of thing, which I'll talk about a, a little bit of uh, in in due course as well. So uh, it's substantial in terms of the numbers and hours offered, and you know what we're looking for is, is competitive. So we prefer if that's topped up with the applicant's own funds. You know we want to see this as a partnership. What projects can bring to the party also in terms of you know funds and in kind sort of opportunities and offers as well. And, you know, what we found as well from round one is some of these sort of unsuccessful applicants uh, were more focused on their own business needs and development needs rather than the sort of development of the 18 to 25 young people uh, that approach. So, you know, certainly some of them could have been improved by taking a collaborative approach and giving more time and space uh, and, and value to, you know, to support the young people's ideas as well. So that's something really to be conscious of. Uh, and you know, businesses requesting funding to deliver conventional internship schemes or simply commissioned freelancers were, you know, pretty unlikely to be funded, to be honest with you. you. You know, we're looking for something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more exciting when, you know, as we've said, young people really, really have that, uh, you know, put the centre of the whole project, really. Uh, so, yeah, which is in line with the aims of the fund. Uh, you know, in terms of the comprehensive support, you know, we're thinking about you know the professional needs mentoring networks you know access needs as well travel equipment you know access to disabled young people 
and the well-being needs as well. I mean, Spike mentioned it there himself in his project. You know, the mental health sort of uh, support and one-to-one support is 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 really important. Uh, you know, the program overview. So the strongest ones, you know, are really interested and clear in an accessible format. You know, I guess what it is as well is it's, it's both style and substance, you know, make it appealing. The program overview usually is done through a, a deck that you perform or, or a video uh, submission. And that's actually, interestingly, is assessed by the young people. Uh, we've got some young assessors involved in the incubator fund, which is, you know, critical. It's, it's for young people. So we're really about using young people and what opportunities are exciting and interesting to them. So it's, you know, the best examples of those have been designed, you know, with the intended audience in, in, in you know, which is young people, basically. Uh, so, yeah, be really conscious of that, that young people are involved in the assessment. And so when you're producing that, make it really sort of stand out uh, and, and the meaningful opportunity behind that as well. Uh, so recruiting people, uh, you know, Spike again mentioned it there. Dan's uh, talked about it, a lot of that coming from the blueprint for the future report. Uh, you know, and, and, and the guidance as well that we provide online, we'll have all that in. Uh, but, you know, working in partnership with local youth organisations, uh, reaching out to underrepresented groups and making sure the application process is accessible as well. Uh, you know, not all young people are good at writing applications as, as well as we all are as well. So, you know, make sure there's other opportunities for, for, for ways of applying in terms of, uh, you know, through, through video or, 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 or different opportunities as well. It's really important. Uh, you know, an active role in the sort of, uh, in the music industry, you know, we're keen to support applicants who can demonstrate active, you know, and impactful sort of music roles in the music industry, you know, the company and staff uh, sort of angle there. Um, participants would benefit directly from their own industry insight. So, you know, networks and influence and opportunities to bring all this together uh, for young people to really access and draw into and tap into and benefit from. Uh, again, meeting the budget criteria is pretty straightforward, hopefully, although it, it is important really to read that because, you know, actually one or two organizers, I say it's simple and straightforward, you know, one or two organizations fell down there in round one. Uh, it's not simply a job replacement scheme. It's not simply you can draw down £30,000 for one role. Uh, you know, there's different opportunities. There's, you know, having people on the payroll, commissioning people, and then smaller grants opportunities as well. So really do, do sort of invest and look into that and make sure you're clear on what the budget criteria is. 50% uh, of the money has to go to the young people. 50% of the money can stay with the organisation. Uh, there's a maximum allowance on the salaries, as I mentioned, uh, and, you know, it's all about payment of the real living wage as well. As a living wage uh, employee, youth music, we're really passionate about pushing that onto the, the organisations that we support as well. Uh, so, yeah, and just moving on to the COVID slide, I saw Dan jump ahead to there. Uh, you know, we are where we are at the moment, uh, you know, we don't quite know where we're going to be in three, six, nine, 12 months. So it's really important to sort of have, you know, have a strong think about this, how it would impact your project and what you can do uh, to sort of compensate for that. Uh, you know, I'm thinking if these are, you know, by the time the applications go in in February and, and grants are awarded in April and June, you know, we could potentially be into the second half of the year when projects kick off. But again, uh, what that will look like is, is still a little bit of the unknown. So it's it's kind of planning and worst for worst case scenarios as well into your into your applications. Uh, you know, think about safeguarding measures and partners and venues, this kind of thing, if you're doing events. Uh, you know, really be mindful about the young people, again, putting them front and center, what they'd be uh, comfortable with. And, you, you know, we've got to be flexible so just make sure you you know that's all factored into the application uh, there is a section on the on the application form that talks specifically about covid so uh, you know you will be forced to have a think about it and put it down uh, and how it's affected you know potentially the program uh, as, as there was question in the in the uh, 
chat there a little bit about the Kickstart Fund as well uh, that's coming into play just now. And Dan's going to talk a little bit about the information. And again, apologies for rushing through that bit again, but it is available on the on the website. And I want to leave some good time for question and answers as well. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So, so the Kickstart scheme um, was launched by the government in the summer. Um, it's taken quite a long time to actually become live. Um, and so I think applications are now being received by the government. And um, so for anyone that doesn't know what it is, um, it basically provides funding to employers to create job placements, six month job placements for 18 to 24 year olds on universal credit. Um, so it's part of that COVID recovery program. And the jobs need to be at least 25 hours a week, run for a six month total. And the government will then pay 100% of the national minimum wage for that person's age um, and the associated NI costs and pension contributions, et cetera. So it's a really good opportunity. Um, and what we would like to see people doing, you know, wherever possible is, is maximizing that and thinking about how they could combine the incubator fund and the kickstart scheme together. Um, what we've done as youth music is we have um, worked with creative and cultural skills, who are a kind of national um, national skills body, who are going to work as what's called a kickstart gateway, which means that if you are a smaller employer who wants to access the kickstart fund, you can do it through a gateway organisation like creative and cultural skills. Um, so I know Spike at Forte, you guys are you guys are, are, are trying to access Kickstart through um, creative and cultural skills as well, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we haven't heard anything yet, though, Dan. So. Yeah, no, us neither. So we <laughs> think what's happened is a lot of people have applied to the fund and the government's been slightly overwhelmed with applications and they're still assessing them. So we were hoping we would know by now, um, but, but we don't know yet. But we're hoping to hear any day now about um, whether CC skills have been successful. And if they have, that means that they're going to have, I think they've said about 1,500 jobs, which they're going to be able to um, allocate across the sector. So, uh, yeah, if, if you want to access it through CC skills, then let us know. You can do that as part of your application form. Um, obviously, you can you can apply directly yourselves as well if you want to do that. Um, so then just, just like slide um, around what some of the dates are. So the deadline is the 5th of February for this round. Um, you would get a decision by the end of April and then you'd be looking, we'd be looking for people to start their projects um, around kind of summertime, July, August um, to get going with the projects. Um, so there's some links on there and obviously we'll send the presentation around afterwards. Um, my email address is up there, Mark's as well. And then there's a, a, a generic email called grants at youthmusic.org.uk. So if you have any specific questions, um, best to email grants because that email address is always looked after by somebody who, who can deal with inquiries. Um, and then obviously follow us on the social channels as well and you can see when um, opportunities are available. And what we're asking people to do is, is once they're creating opportunities like Spike's jobs that he's now got live, um, to post them on our opportunities board and then we'll amplify them on social media and make sure that we get them out to the young people they're looking to reach. So that's enough from us. Hopefully it gives you a good sense of, of, of the programme um, and how it works. We've got now about half an hour for um, questions and answers. So I don't know, Phoebe, if you've got a sense from the chat of, of whether there's any, yeah, any questions there. Yeah, we already had uh, one from Steve, and I don't know if you, uh, Stephanie, I sorry, Stephanie, if you want to have a quick read, Daniel, I can read it out if you want as well. But it's, can we include testing new ethical, equitable models of distribution, like challenging the Spotify sort of, I guess, model um, that put the producer artist at the centre? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really exciting idea. Um, I, I don't know quite how that works in terms of the program you're running, but it's certainly something that came up quite a lot as we were doing the research was around um, Spotify and streaming services and the impact of that on um, young people's career building. Um, so that was quite an interesting one, but, but yeah, I'd be happy to talk more about what that might look like in practice. Um, if, uh, Sorry, was it Steve, did you say? Uh, Stephanie. 
Ste Stephanie, sorry. Yeah, Stephanie. <laughs> sorry, uh, my yeah, bad. Stephanie, if you wanted to, to, to talk through more about what that might look like um, in an application, then yeah, feel free to contact us on the on the grants email address and we can we can um, talk through it in more detail. Lovely. And yeah, um, if anyone wants to unmute as well and ask a question, that's fine. But um, Stephanie also asked, when you say recruit, can this include worker owned models, i.e. co-ops, which build livelihoods? Um, do you want to say a bit more about what, what you mean by that, Stephanie? Yeah, well, Daniel, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's when the emphasis is on recruit, um, we're just looking at championing worker co-op models where the, the artists, worker members are actually building livelihoods rather than being recruited in or employees of. And so I know the language is at the moment on your application says recruit, but yeah. That would include different models of drawing livelihood, which would include worker co-ops and things. Yeah. Yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, the, there's there's no issue with that. It's um, what we wanted to give applicants is the flexibility to um, get the money out to the young people in the yeah. in, in the best way. So if you can find another way of doing that, um, that's that's fine. I think our our bottom line is that it gets into the pockets of those young people who doing the work and that we're trying to help um, so the way that you do that there's flexibility around it brilliant thank you Dior. lovely and then we've got one uh, how wide is the activity around music journalism filmmaking producers promoters etc yeah that's a really good point um so we we tried to in the in the report try to coin a term the music industries rather than saying the music industry the whole time because it tends to um, bring connotations of, you know, everyone has an idea of what the music industry is and um, what genres that might involve. And we, we try to talk more about the music industries to include stuff like, you know, um, like you've said here, journalism, filmmaking, producers, promoters, um, because obviously that all is within the ecosystem of, of, of how music um, operates. So yes, that is that is eligible. Um, you know, it needs to be music related. So if we're talking about filmmaking, you know, music films, um, music videos, etc., cetera, um, rather than, uh, you know, filmmaking per se. But as long as it's related to music, then then it's eligible. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, another one from Uni Unity. Please, can you give a bit more info about accessing Kickstart funding via creative cultural skills? Yeah, so um, basically what, what Kickstart, uh, what the government have done with Kickstart is, you have to have at least 30 jobs as an employer if you want to access Kickstart funding. Now, most people here, I would imagine, are not going to be able to create 30 jobs at their organisation. Um, so what the government's encouraged bigger organisations to do is um, apply on behalf of a number of employers. So creative and cultural skills have already um, gone out to the sector and said, who wants to apply to Kickstart? Um, we can apply on your behalf tell us how many jobs you want to apply for so for example spikes already um, gone in with them to say we want x number um, youth music went in and we said we want um, a few hundred and what that will enable us to do is when people come through the incubator fund we can then allocate those that that funding from creative and cultural skills to applicate applicants who have applied for the Kickstarter, just to make the process a bit easier so that you're not having to deal with like um, lots of different people. Um, so yeah, like I said, we, we're not gonna know, um, or we'll hopefully know really soon, but we don't know at the moment whether CT skills have been successful. Um, does that answer the question? Kind of. So, uh, so do we wanna be telling you now that we potentially have jobs that we would like you to fund through that? Or do we wait until you know? You can tell us now. So the, the application form will ask you, you know, if you want to access Kickstarter, tell us which jobs you want to access it for. And um, because the other thing is that Kickstarter is totally separate from the incubator fund. So if you weren't successful with the incubator fund, you could still go to creative and cultural skills and say, we've got, you know, four Kickstarter jobs we want to create. And then you know they'll have a they'll have a little application process that that they'll want you to go through, um, which I understand is going to be fairly straightforward. But yeah, it's you know we're trying to link the two things, but they are separate. So 
you know, if you if you weren't successful in incubator, you could still go to create culture skills. Okay, and is there a pro like is there a process for that up online somewhere, or do we just email you? How does that work? It's it's um you you can you can email us if you want to, um, but I think it if you want to access both, the best way to do it is to go through the incubator fund application. Okay. If you just want to get on the list for creative and cultural skills and let them know that you're interested in creating some kickstart jobs, then you can email them directly. And I've got the contact details from the person who's leading it there, um, a woman called Madeline. So if you want to, um, if you want her contact details, I'd be happy to. Uh, pass it would back. be like, I'm thinking it would be for both, like you said before, to kind of um, have both. So would that be just wait and, and apply for the incubator fund and put in there? Yeah, yeah. If you want to, if you if you're creating a kind of incubator funded project with Kickstart Jobs, um, then do it through the incubator fund application. Okay. Thank you. Okay, just because Stephanie's asked another question on CC skills, Stephanie, did you want to just clarify what what else you'd like to know? Yeah, I'm just really intrigued. My ears are pricking up with what okay. Daniel's just said, um, and it's whether people like Spike and Daniel, whether the mentoring, which is actually critical to the kickstart placements, being you know progression pathways, is that being? Um, are you doing the mentoring within the organisation? So is Spike going to be mentoring within his organisation those young people, or is CC Skills doing a kind of a remote mentoring approach? I'm just really interested in how that's situated. Um, I don't actually know what the plan is for the CC skills um, mentoring. Like, I don't know what they've put in their application. Um, I know that obviously they will have had to have devised a, a plan around the mentoring. Um, I think you know what what we're doing as part of the incubator fund is we ask everybody to have a really clear mentoring and support package in place. So um, the organisations we fund through incubator will have that in in place. Um, those who are going directly to CC skills. I'm not sure how it works, whether people will access CC skills is uh, centralized mentoring or whether they will have to have their own um, uh, kind of bespoke idea about how they're going to do it. Each individual organization. I'm not actually sure. Spike, do you know what what, what have you guys said? Did, did, were you asked about that at all? No, actually not. Um, first stage was just an expression of interest, really. So we've put that down we've put how many jobs we could, could possibly take on and we do have mentors structure within our project but you know we, we're not too sure actually Stephanie how far CC skills will get involved uh, as soon as we hear I, I suppose I can let you know but we are literally we haven't heard anything as yet thanks Mike thanks Daniel uh, and then Dan we've had one just about future funding rounds in general after this one um, so we're, we're running the incubator fund twice a year and um, what we're able to do at the moment is we've got enough funding to run four rounds. So uh, in 2021, we're doing two rounds. Um, um, yeah, hopefully we'll be continuing this, um, you know, going forward now as part of the music portfolio. But it, it is dependent on us continuing to get income in for the fund. Um, something which I should highlight is, we, um, you know, we, we are fundraising for it. Uh, at the moment and for the next two rounds um, YouTube are putting in some money and mentoring support as well around digital and um, so that's that's quite exciting that um, they're adding their um, expertise into the mix and a bit of money as well. Thank you I think this one is a yes but am I able to directly apply for the incubator fund as a young person between 18 to 25 in order to develop a project collaborative run and organized by myself and my peers or do I need to rely on larger orgs to act as a sort of middleman I think that's um, okay you can you can apply and um, you know we had applications from from young people in the last round um, we funded some organizations led and run by young people um, so yeah, you, you, you can, it is, this fund is, is particularly focused at, um, organizations, collectives, not-for-profits, businesses, um, as Mark highlighted at the beginning, we are creating a fund for individuals, um, which we're going to launch later on this year, which will be about supporting, um, yeah, personal development for individuals rather than, um, this is more of a kind of collective, uh, endeavor. And then Andy's asked if all the activity has to take place within the UK. 
Um, the participants have to be from the UK, um, living in the UK. The activity um, doesn't necessarily have to all take place in there. So, for example, if you were going to take them um, to another uh, a country and do some work there, then there's not necessarily an issue on that. That's the end of the questions, but if anyone wants to ask any on, on the mic or anything, that's totally yeah. fine. I got a few questions, please. Um, I'm a videographer. I run my own um, filming company. I'm an artist as well. And I work with loads of young disadvantaged kids in South Wales, uh, this is where I live. And um, it was Beth Neffin that literally pushed me to um, come to this meeting. And um, yes, I was quite impressed and see um, how, and I, I know there's so many talented young people out here that would definitely benefit from this. And like, I'm talking about caliber artists, good caliber artists that don't, don't have the opportunity. So like, I've got experience as an artist myself in the, um, in the music industry and as a videographer as well. I make loads of videos for the young people as well. So um, I'm just saying that this definitely could be something I could apply for, right? Yeah, so how, who would you be applying? Is, if, do you have your own organization like, um, or would you be applying through an organization or would you be? Yeah, I've, I've got my own, my own business, um, Tad Media, as a okay. filming company. Um, but I've got an organization I work with called um, MOL, Military of Life, um, based in, in um, Cardiff. And they work with loads of, um, literally they teach music to young people between the age, between the same age um, group as well. Yeah. Um, so that could be something I could possibly do as well. Like, you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that that's fine. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like more, almost as well. Sorry, bringing you know, those two worlds together could be a good good way. You know, collaboration between the two organisations might be an interesting one to look into as well. Okay. Yeah. So, because I, I was when I, when you asked you guys, being I think, oh, I can call my friend and see if it was something would be interesting. But this is what they do anyway, and we work closely with them. I'm I mean, literally I'm the videographer for their youths, and sometimes I go there and give him advice about music and what to do and stuff like that so yeah yeah oh yeah and um, Steph Magnus Stephanie's put uh, something in the chat for you as well what's that um so check that out there's a uh, question for you there Mark and Daniel can I just ask on um Magnus's point with with um, somebody who's already working in the scene is it about them coming up with a project concept or an idea like so that it's a focused period of time, not necessarily just supporting the work that Magdus is already doing. Are you looking for a specific project? Yeah, yeah, I think I think we are looking for a specific project. Um, I think the ones that were successful in the first round um, were doing something that was often the idea had come through the young people themselves. Um, so. I think those organizations that had were already working in that way or working with young people and could say to them this is the fun this is the opportunity but how can we work together to create something that you know you guys can lead on we can support you with what what, what would this look like um i think those were the ones where where they felt felt really strong because you, you knew the young people were doing what they wanted to be doing rather than somebody coming in and saying well we've designed this project would you like to take part um so yeah, it, it, it was that sort of thing. Unity sort of asked about all the requirements, which you sort of already touched on, um, and we can always share the page and stuff afterwards. But I didn't don't know if you wanted to go into any quick ones, Daniel. Um, yeah. What 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 do you mean by um, requirements? I mean, there's there's a, what we've tried to do is reduce some of the barriers that we have on some of our other funding streams and that some other funders have which is around um you have to have been set up for a and registered as an organization for like at least a year or you have to have delivered a program of this nature before we haven't got any requirements like that um so you can apply even as an informal collective um, okay yeah that's what i mean yeah cool um yeah so you so you can apply as a collective but what what we'd asked collectives who were not formally constituted to do is to work with a, a kind of lead applicant that can um, act as the, the, the kind of sponsor organization there. 
So, um, yeah, if you're an informal collective, you know, the money will need to be paid out to someone who is um, like a, a legally set up organisation. OK, so for that organisation, what do they need to have in place? Um, they would need to be uh, constituted as an organisation. Um, so as a like community interest company or community interest organisation, business. Um, Does charity. that thing about time apply to that as well? Basically, New Era are just setting it up. They're like pretty much constituted. Um, we're just in the process of trying to get a bank account set up. So would would that be okay as a lead organisation? Or if 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 you're you're constituted by the deadline, um, then when yes. is the deadline? Fifth uh, of February. Cool. Oh wow. Well, okay. Um, if you think that's going to be difficult, yeah. If that's going to be an issue, then you maybe look to. Um, so to with so if, it, if if we are constituted by then, do we need to have a bank account as well, or is it? Just yeah, you do. You do need to have a bank account in the organisation's okay. name. Yeah. And then we've had a question about the individual fund. Um, I think that is definitely this year, but I don't know if we've got time frames yet. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, so it's definitely launching this year. Um, time frame is is a, what we're doing is we've we've got some fund funds raised already, which we're putting into this. We're actually um, trying to raise some further funds, and we're in um, contracting with with another organisation about that. So it, it we're hoping it will be around April that we launch it. Um, it might be slightly delayed depending on this other funder that we're working with. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be this year, hopefully first half of this year. And um, it's really exciting for us. Um, and yeah, it's going to be going to be first time that Eats Music's been able to do that sort of thing. Can I just oh. ask a quick question? Sorry, just to jump in. Um, it's just easier to ask this than type this, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the, the program timeline i'm um, saying that the the program activity can be between three and 24 months um am i correct to assume what you mean then is so we're looking potentially from july 2021 through to july 2023 at the furthest end point or could we be saying we're starting october 2021 and we can go through to october 2023 is there a cutoff yeah so so um I think it is in the application form, the latest start date that you can put down. I think it's September. Um, okay. So yeah, I think, and then it would be September 2023 would then be the cutoff for that. Um, okay, yeah, so I, I think it's October. I think it is September, but um, it is in the form. The floor is open if anyone's got any other questions or even wants to discuss anything relating to their idea. Um, we can I'm sorry, I'm not, I wasn't sure if you answered this. The um, how often do the rounds come up? And um, twice a year. Okay. So the next round we think will be in um, July again, which is what we did last year, and then we awarded the funds end of September. And then the activity must happen the year that it's funded, not like a year. Yeah. So it, it, once it, you know you've got the funding, it has to happen almost straight away. Yeah, not 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 straight away, straight away, but um, you know, within the next kind of three months. months yeah. Yeah. No, more like three months. But okay. then the project obviously might last the next twelve. But we, we want you to start it um within I think three months. Three months of receiving the funds. Of yeah, exactly, of of having been approved and receiving. In the application form, you do put a start date of the project. Yeah. Has asked you for a start date of the project, so that's taken into consideration yeah. as well. And it's really great to see so many of you. I'm, I'm also conscious of just mentioning something about competition because um, we were able to fund 30 um, organisations in, in the first round. Um, we did have 160 applicants, um, so you know you can get a sense there of, of how competitive it was. Um, so you know it it is going to be like you know i'm just thinking if everybody here applies it, it, it will be quite competitive again so you know think about where you could potentially collaborate with each other as well rather than trying to um you know both put in separate applications and um, there might be opportunities where you guys could work together and i can see a bit of that happening in the chat anyway people are saying like let's talk about this and this mm. um, 
So if everyone's happy, yeah. I can share everyone's email. But message me if you're unhappy with that. But like that makes sense. Or so everyone can sort of start emailing each other or whatever. Or message each other privately now or whatever and you know get some combos going. But yeah. We've got some thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if anyone's got anything else they would like to ask, that's fine. I'm sorry for my uh, naive, naivety. Uh, I came here this morning as like a non-constituted organisation as a young person. So I'm, uh, it's been fascinating to see how it's all set up anyway. Um, but for the individual fund, and I know this is a Zoom about something totally different, but uh, for the individual fund, we're looking at like a gig organisation that's trying to put on gigs for Welsh language artists uh, and try and give opportunities to like new artists coming through that haven't had the opportunity to gig this year because of the COVID situation. Um, is the individual fund set up for organisations only or is that set up for something like we're doing? Yeah, no, the, the, the individual fund would, would be for um, yeah, exactly that, like somebody who's under 25 who's looking to um, get a budget to deliver a creative project, whether that's, you know, like you said, um, you know, work with bands and um, or, you know, work with artists. So, yeah, it, it, it won't be just an artist fund. Um, we're really clear about that, but we want it to be more flexible. Cool, thank you. I see you've posted the uh, job advert as well there, Phoebe, well done. Uh, just, just you know, that's for the uh, some assessors that we're, we're putting together a group of assessors. So, you know, feel free to have a look at that or share that to anybody you think might be interested as well. So good opportunity to plug it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, so I think we're looking for a, a really broad section of people who could assess um, not just our incubator fund applications, but um, fund A and fund B um, as well. So anyone who's interested in kind of music and young people um, and has experience of having run projects, wow. that's really what we're looking for. You don't necessarily have to have experience of having assessed before. Um, we, we're really keen to get people with um, uh, expertise um, not necessarily of, of, of having done this work rather than necessarily assessed it. Great. Okay, that's amazing. That's perfect timing as well. Just two minutes early. Uh, you can get a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, but yeah, you know, appreciate you all taking the time out this morning to come and join us. Uh, you know, we're really excited by the Incubator Fund. This, you know, the first round was amazing. There's some really great projects kicking off and you know, we'd love to fund more Welsh organisations, which is what this has all been about as well. Uh, you know, we'll send the presentation around in an email afterwards. We've got everybody's uh, uh, email. I might send a quick email before just to make sure everybody, I, I noticed one of